Welcome to how it works with Hologroot. Today I would like to show you how you can visualize a track of coordinates on a map. You might think, what is a track? And it's pretty simple, like recent, and this is actually when I have conceived this example, when I've written this example, I was hunkered down for a recent natural event here in Florida during a hurricane. The United States government, or more likely the National Hurricane Center, um, issues an official track for each hurricane by the end of the year that is available for free in a text file, and I converted that text file into a database. That way, I have, for each storm, I have coordinates. These coordinates are really like you see it here, so the header ID, I rather should call this as storm ID to make it easier for you to understand what is being visualized here. So each storm has a number of coordinates. For example, the first 14 rows in my database table are one storm. And here you see the track of the storm um, for the different coordinates. The full table, and I only selected some of the data for you at first, the full table has way more attributes, as you can see right here, um, with the year of the storm, and of course, um, the time when this track or when this position for the storm was reached. For you, you might say, well, I, I'm not interested in storms, I'm not interested in hurricanes, I guess, who is, right? But this could very well be like a route um, that you tracked in the database that you want to visualize on a map. So the end game is a demo like this, where you can select the storm, for example, 2017 and 2000 and 1978, we had the storm Irma, 1978 was harmless. No people were killed. So the name Irma was reinstated in 2017 for another storm and there were casualties. So the name Irma is no longer used. And that's the reason why this year in 2019, or sorry, this year in 2022, we had Ian, which is not available in the database yet because National Hurricane Center releases the database by the end of hurricane season, which is going to be at the end of November. And this is data from the database. So here is the track for those storms. And in this example, I'm going to show you how you can quickly visualize things like that. In this case, as a database, I'm using a SQLite database. Of course, this could also be MySQL, Microsoft SQL. Delphi makes this excruciatingly easy because FireDAX supports all these databases. Just for simplicity, as you can see here in my directory, I have my database and I have my display application, which opens the database and then I can display whatever I want from the database component of the application is, of course, the mapping control. And TMS software offers a multitude of these controls for the VCL. You have the GMAPS controls. However, for the VCL also, you have now the FNC map controls, which allow you to select the service that you want to use. In this case, it's open layers, but I could have also picked any of these listed here. I'm going to use Google to um, visualize the track of the hurricane. However, the provider of the map is completely up to you. You, you can select any of the supported providers. Um, the key is for this example, here, how do you get the track from the database onto the map? And it's not as complicated as you might think it is. So looking at the data controls at first, we have the connection to the database, of course. We have the query with the tracks. And I also have here on the right side, two more queries that deliver the data for the combo boxes that are not part of this presentation, but just for completeness, they are there. But the key is this one here for the track. So I want to extract the data from one storm. Right? So I select all the attributes from the um, table tracks, where the header ID, why do I call it header? Why don't I call it storm? Well, 
The thing is, the National Hurricane Center released this official file format, and they say there's a header that identifies the storm, and then there is the number of tracks that reference this header. That's why I use the term header ID in this case, but you could also refer to it as storm ID. And um, to transfer the example to a use case that you'll probably use, for example, the delivery package delivery, product delivery, um, that would be your delivery ID or something like that. That is all there is. Note that we use, of course, the parameter that we can then access in code using param by name. So switching over to the code, I implemented the method getTracks. getTracks gets a header ID and it returns, and this is key, a uh, coordinate record array. So let me go into that into a little bit more detail. So with FNC maps, you have always the TMS FNC maps prefix for all the classes and types, I should say, because in this case, we don't have a class. We have a array of records. Coordinate, a coordinate is always latitude, longitude, and in later versions of FNC maps, also the elevation. Let's see if Delphi plays ball. Here you see that the um, this, this is an array of the coordinate record, and the coordinate record is longitude, latitude, elevation. And because TM uh, FNC Maps also supports import of common file formats that are used for tracking, like if you do a workout and you wear a tracker around your wrist, that has even more information like the timestamp and, of course, the information. Do we have an elevation? Do we have a timestamp? The reason for that is, of course, we don't have nullable values in Delphi. So in this case, the Boolean properties allow you to mark if these values exist or not. In addition, now we also have a data object um, that allows us to tie the uh, coordinate to a reference, to our object reference. And we are also able to add a description to each coordinate. And of course, a track is an array of coordinates, you know, a, a collection of coordinates identified by longitude and latitude. And that's exactly what we want to return for each storm, because each storm track is a collection of these coordinates. So get tracks gets the ID of the storm. And all we need to do, first of all, we disable the controls of the query in case we tie the query to you any visual controls and that should always be wrapped with try finally because we want to make sure if something goes wrong here that our controls are being enabled again so in the finally clause we have the enable controls then we assign the parameter right here to the header id and open the query and that does the select and replaces the header id placeholder with the actual header id and we can get the record count Tricky, tricky right here. Why is record count sometimes a little bit difficult? Well, record count in FireDAC does not always return the total number of records that match the criteria of your query. And the reason is that FireDAC has a caching mechanism in place so that, no, that only a certain amount of records is being retrieved at once. And that is something you can set in the fetching. So you either set it in the query or in your connection for all the queries that you uh, hook up. So here you see the fetch options. And if we go down here, you see the record count mode, very important. I set it to CM total. So that means the record count always returns the total number of records that match the criteria. It's a little bit more time consuming because FireDAC, of course, issues an additional statement in order to determine the record count. But this way, you can use record count without any constraints and don't need to do a select count star or whatever yourself. You can use FireDAC. Just make sure that record count mode is set to CM total, either for your query individually, which I would recommend, or if you know that you want this behavior for all your queries, then you can also do this 
on the connection because Fire Deck has the same options um, a structure like the connection um, determines the options for all the connected queries a manager an FD manager actually is on top of that if you set something in the F FD manager it is true for all the connections that you use in your project so with that we go back to this code and we set of course the length of result result is our array to the number of records and then simply iterate we set the first item to zero and then we assign the longitude and latitude to the fields from the database increase the count skip to the next record and when we're done we close and enable the control so this way we build the array so wonderful we have the array but how do we get the array on the map so going back here to the project drop the fnc maps control and the first thing you always need to take care of implement the map initialized event very very important because map initialized has to be called before you can make will be called before you're able to make changes to the map if map initialized has not been called and you interact with the map in your application these commands will be ignored because the component is just not ready yet so whenever you do something make sure that you only make it possible to um, interact with the map when ma the map has been initialized in this case um, i'm using a loading flag when the form is being created i set loading to true and if the map has been initialized i set loading to false and the property value then basically in the setter i do all the necessary adjustments inside of the form to basically hide or show the components depending on the loading state so going over here um, what happens if we we select a storm i'm not going to go into into these aspects of the application maybe for another video but what i want to focus on here is how do we draw the track for a certain storm so we call the get tracks with the header id the function that i've just shown you and we assign l coordinates which is of type tms fnc maps coordinate record array and then we need a polyline and the wonderful thing is if you map a polyline a polyline wonderful word so map which is my mapping control map dot add polyline right here takes exactly what we have it takes a coordinate record array and then you can also say do you want to close the shape no we don't want to close the shape because it's a track it's not not a shape it um kind of that should be closed so we we take the default which is fault but it also returns a polyline and that's very important because when we just add the polyline we accept the default values if i get the reference to the polyline i then have the chance to change the stroke color i change that to red the width and the opacity which is 50 percent and that is the first step so let's just do this and comment out that line let's start that again because i also want to focus on the zoom to bounce a little bit so again i let's take one of the most horrible storms ever katrina and to, it was 2005 and this it has been added we just don't have any awareness of it right here so here's the storm but the map does not move and that is exactly what zoom to bounce does it takes a coordinate array and zooms exactly to that area of this coordinate array so you can and the map has a property with all the polylines that have been added to it i like a collection and that not only has it an items property you can add insert delete or clear clear all the polylines then you remove everything you've drawn on your map so far but you can also call two coordinate array and then you get a coordinate array 
of all your polylines that you have added to the map so far. And that way you can zoom to the bounds of all the polylines that you've added. And that's pretty useful because it doesn't work only for one storm, but for multiple. Let's say I only take this one here, L poly. So L poly dot coordinates dot, and then we can say to array. So that way we get just the one line that we painted last. That might be the effect that you want. So let's say you have Irma for 1978, boom, right here. And then you do Irma for 2017. And then you have this one. Um, but let's say we take Katrina now. Katrina, where it is it? There, in the year 2005. See then, you no longer see the one that I've added before. And if I just don't zoom only to the one I added, but to all of them. So I take all the polylines from the map and call to coordinate array. Then, no matter how many storms I add, it is always going to focus on all of them. So if I take a tree now, let's see. Let's move over here, for example, like so. Let's take Katrina. Boom, 2005. There you go. We zoom out and we see all three storms again that we've added. So that is how easy it is to take data from a database and visualize it on a map with FNC maps. If you want to learn more about mapping with TMS Maps, of course, the product documentation will give you all you need, all the features. However, in hands-on by example explanation is my book, um, which is called TMS Software Hands-On with Delphi FNC Maps, the cross framework, cross platform, cross service, because you have all the different mapping services, mapping component library. That's the title of the book. It's available at Amazon worldwide. And I'm quite sure the example will be pretty helpful for you to build even more compelling mapping applications than the one that I've just shown to you.